In another video, we discovered that the eigenvectors of a to the n are exactly the same as the eigenvectors of a, and that eigenvalues of a to the n are the same as the eigenvalues of a raised to the nth power. And this rule works for all integer powers of n, positive and negative. So as far as a to the n is concerned, identical eigenvectors, related eigenvalues. In this video, we'll consider a different transformation of A that leads to a new matrix that has the exact same eigenvalues and related eigenvectors. So the starting point is the same. Consider a matrix A and suppose that we know all of its eigenvalues and all of its eigenvectors. And now pick an arbitrary invertible matrix X and multiply A by X on the left and X inverse on the right. And that's our new matrix. Now, if you saw an expression like this early on, your first instinct might be the same as mine, which is x times x inverse is identity, so x cancels x inverse, and this matrix equals a. But that, of course, is not correct. In order to reach that conclusion, we would need matrices to commute so that x can end up next to x inverse. But of course, matrices do not commute, so we're not able to reach that conclusion. So generally speaking, this matrix is different from A. However, it is similar in many ways. We'll discover that it has the same eigenvalues as the matrix A, and its eigenvectors are related to the eigenvectors of A in a very specific way. So because these matrices are so similar, this transformation is called the similarity transformation. So let's discover its properties. Suppose that lambda is an eigenvalue of A and that V is the corresponding eigenvector. I will now multiply our new matrix X, A, X inverse. Let's give it a name. Let's call it B by a vector U. And of course, I want the vector U to be such that X inverse U is V. Why is that? Well, because I want to take advantage of my knowledge of eigenvalues and eigenvectors of the matrix A. And if A multiplies V, then I know that AV equals lambda V, which is taking advantage of the only thing I know about A. So I want U to equal XV. If U equals XV, then X inverse U, what we have here, is V. Just what I want. So let's see what we have. We have x, a, v. So now I've gotten what I wanted, which is a, v. a, v is lambda, v. So the whole product becomes lambda. It's a number, so it comes all the way out. x, v. So I got v back, and it's next to x, and I know what x, v is. x, v is u. So the whole expression equals lambda u. So now let's see what we have on the board. What we have on the board is that this matrix B times u equals lambda u. So what's the only conclusion that we can reach? That lambda is the eigenvalue of B. B is related to A by the similarity transformation. And u is the corresponding eigenvector. In fact, u is related to V by this transformation right here. So we conclude that A and B have identical eigenvalues and their eigenvectors are related by the transformation X. And do you see how I use the terms matrix and transformation interchangeably? That's just how it is. So let me repeat our transformation, our conclusion regarding the similarity transformation. Matrices related by a similarity transformation, have identical eigenvalues, and their eigenvectors are related by the matrix featured in the similarity transformation. Similarity transformations have great applications in all of linear algebra, but they come up most frequently when we're talking about eigenvalues and eigenvectors, and it'll play a central role in one of our next big topics, which is the eigenvalue decomposition.